want to understand how powerful Big Pharma is, consider the news that did not break today. The pro-transparency news organization, Project Veritas, just released an undercover video of a Pfizer executive bragging on camera about how his company conducts a kind of Frankenstein science, manipulating COVID viruses for profit, imperiling potentially the entire world, doing it in secret, possibly in violation of federal law, bragging about this. So no matter what your politics are, doesn't matter who you voted for, that's a huge story. And you would think every reporter in this country would be itching to follow up on it, calling Pfizer, telling the public about it. But no, that's not happening. In the 24 hours since Project Veritas posted this footage, it has been viewed more than 12 million times on Twitter. So the public is very interested. Why wouldn't they be? But the media are not. No other media outlet has covered the story at all. We checked. MSNBC and CNN, which perhaps not coincidentally take huge amounts of advertising dollars from Pfizer, those two channels have devoted a total of zero seconds to the story. We'll just go online and find out about it. Well, Google, the biggest search engine in the world, which has a monopoly on search in this country, appears to have gone out of its way to make it much more difficult for users to learn anything about the Pfizer executive pictured in the footage. And so there is, in other words, on television and in most places online, a near total media blackout of this story. How powerful is Big Pharma? That powerful. Now, that footage shows a Pfizer executive called Jordan Tristan Walker. He is, according to the documents Project Veritas posted, Pfizer's, quote, Director of Research and Development for Strategic Operations and mRNA Scientific Planning. That's a big job. Walker is very highly educated, and as we said, he's a high-ranking executive at Pfizer. In fact, he's just two reports removed from the CEO of Pfizer, Albert Borla. His name is Jordan Walker once again. Now, what does that sound like? Does that sound familiar? Well, it sounds a lot like the gain-of-function research you read about, the research that was occurring at the Wuhan lab just before COVID broke out of the lab and overturned the world and wrecked the U.S. economy. That was the research that Tony Fauci lied about under oath. As The Intercept has reported, quote, scientists working under a 2014 NIH grant to the EcoHealth Alliance to study bat coronaviruses combined the genetic material from a parent coronavirus known as WIV1 with other viruses. Seven virologists told The Intercept that the research, quote, appears to meet NIH's criteria for gain of function research. In other words, it's exactly what it sounds like it is. So that also sounds like what Jordan Walker just described. So is Pfizer working on that right now? Well, in the clip you just saw, the Pfizer executive is careful to say it's not happening right now, but it is something that Pfizer is secretly considering without telling the public. But in another undercover video, also shot by Project Veritas, Walker suggests that research to mutate viruses is ongoing. They just don't dare call it gain of function. Yeah. It's not gain of function. Oh, no, it's directed evolution. So if you're wondering how Tony Fauci was allowed to lie under oath and get away with it, the FBI did not raid his house. He was never handcuffed. Maybe it's because he used a different term for the same thing. At Pfizer, apparently, they're just calling it directed evolution. Problem solved. And again, we want to remind you what we just heard, and we're quoting the Pfizer executive. You're not supposed to do gain of function research with the viruses. We'd rather not, but we do these selected structure mutations to make them more potent. There is research ongoing about that. Oh, wow. To make the virus more potent? You don't think COVID is potent enough? Killed millions of people. Well, Walker went on to say that Pfizer is trying to keep this research hidden from the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, you know, they're still kind of conducting experiments on it. You just don't want to advertise that you're figuring out future mutations. Figuring out future mutations. Sounds like they're causing future mutations. Now, it's obvious why this man seems a little uncomfortable at what the company he works for is doing because the plan he describes, and we can't verify it's happening, we can only show you what its executive said, that plan could very easily cause a new pandemic and kill millions of people. And by the way, that's why gain-of-function research was banned until 2017 when Tony Fauci helped restart it. So if that happened again and anyone could trace it to Pfizer, that would destroy the company if not the world. So Walker in this tape made it very clear that Pfizer is worried about a repeat of the COVID lab leak. Wait a second, we're all agreeing there was a COVID lab leak? Yeah, Pfizer's never said that in public. 
that the COVID strain started in the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China, where this kind of research was occurring, but apparently everyone just knows that's true. So we just went through this three years ago this month, and there was a global pandemic as a result that again, killed millions of people and destroyed entire countries. It really hurt ours. So why would you even think about doing something like that on purpose once again? Why would you conduct this kind of research when everybody knows the consequences? Well, again, we can't say for sure. We can only tell you what Jordan Walker said. And of course, the point is to make money. Now, a couple things to notice about that exchange. One, Walker thought this through. This is not just off the top of his head. He's not stupid. And he's clearly thought through the potential consequences of this research. But he also is honest enough to admit that it could be a cash cow. And then he says, and he laughs as he says it, COVID's been a cash cow for us. So imagine two pharma executives meeting in a bar and want to say, how can we get kids to smoke more cigarettes? Because, you know, cancer is a cash cow for us. People would recoil in horror. And by the way, regulators would be on this. Where are the regulators? You have to go through regulators. Where are they? Why aren't they regulating a company like Pfizer? Could it be that regulatory capture is real? So that was the end of it. James O'Keefe of Project Veritas shows up and informs Walker he's been recorded and he's clearly upset. And of course, you can understand why he's shocked. He didn't know anyone was filming. Someone was. But what's so interesting is he, his first excuse is, I was lying. When in fact, he has explained in a very sophisticated and very believable way how Washington works. We just promise to hire the regulators and then they don't really regulate us. What you see happening in the defense industry with generals from the Pentagon happens in pharma too. The regulators hope to get rich working here. And that's true. And no executive at a pharma company has ever been filmed saying that on camera before. That's not a lie. That's the truest thing ever spoken in Washington, D.C. And then the situation begins to degrade. So Walker who is supposed to be a highly credentialed man of science, a clear thinking scientist, completely loses control of himself. He becomes hysterical and violent. At one point, he calls the police to complain there are too many white people in his presence and he feels unsafe. And then, of course, he becomes violent again. Stop hitting me, he says, as he punches you in the face, of course. Wow, well, that didn't go well. That man doesn't seem like much of a scientist. On one hand, you can kind of feel for him. On the other hand, what was that? But more than anything, you've got questions. What was that? This guy's a pretty high level Pfizer executive confirming a lot of things you already suspected and telling you things you had no idea were going on. So of course you'd want to know, what? Was that real? And what does Pfizer have to say about it? Well, no one else is calling Pfizer, so we did. We called them repeatedly today. And we asked very basic questions. Does this guy, does Walker still work for you? And if not, when did he leave the company? And more than anything, are you actually conducting experiments or considering conducting experiments to mutate new and more dangerous coronaviruses because it would be a cash cow? And if you are doing that or thinking about doing it, have you received any U.S. government funding? Are taxpayers paying for this? We didn't have complex questions, very simple ones. We called and emailed Pfizer all day. But despite their famously well-funded PR department, all the lobbying money they spend, they did not get back to us. They refused to answer. So contacted instead Dr. Robert Malone, who's one of the inventors of the mRNA technology used in Pfizer's COVID shots. He's a world-famous expert on this subject. You can read him on Substack, and we're happy to have him join us right now. Doctor, thank you so much for coming on. So this is a very complex subject, and we're grateful that you're here. From what you saw in that tape, does it sound like Pfizer is conducting or contemplating conducting research that is effectively like gain of function? Hi, Tucker. It's great to be here, and thanks. Thank you. Uh, it it appears it appears that they are recapitulating exactly what was done at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, right down to serial passage in their case in monkeys instead of uh, humanized mice. Um, but the, the buried lead in this, Tucker, if you don't mind me saying so, oh, please. is the implicit, the implicit acknowledgement 
that they cannot construct vaccines fast enough. The virus is outrunning them, and they're having to resort to extraordinary measures. This is an acknowledgement of defeat of their vaccine technology and their platform and campaign. They're saying that we have to go so far out on the edge that we're really crossing a line. We're breaking the law, but we have no other choice because our technology is not meeting the need. They're, we're not able to produce vaccines fast enough to get ahead of these virus mutations. Well, that went right over my head. So thank you for calling that to our attention. Amazing. But in, so you're describing a motive that makes some sense. It's not just about money. They, they want to create an effective vaccine. But it sounds like, as you put it, they're going to exactly the place that got us COVID in the first place. Well, how is that allowed? Precisely. Um, so the biowarfare treaty is uh, like a cheesecloth that's so leaky. Uh, this, th this is not a hard uh, prohibition. And Pfizer is a global company that's quite clear with massive resources, the ability to conduct research in virtually any region, and by the way, a very close relationship with the government of Israel, which is not a signatory to the Biowarfare Treaty. So they have all kinds of ways they can do this if this is the ethical choice, you know, or I shouldn't say the unethical choice probably, that they appear to have made. Uh, they, they, they have the ability with their money and power, as you've seen, to uh, define the rules and uh, construct their own reality. I, I mean, the question of regular, and this is a much longer conversation, but I, I, someone who lived in Washington for a long time, was very struck by his description of regulatory capture at Pharma and, and Pfizer specifically. Does that sound right to you? Absolutely. And in fact, this is the second time that Veritas has caught somebody saying this. They caught an uh, um, uh, employee at BARDA basically saying the same thing as I recall previously. This is, this is widely known. It was, it was covered in the big short in terms of the SEC. This, this is standard, as you point out correctly, this is standard practice in D.C. I mean, you'd think Congress would, would pass a law or the White House or the agency's regulation if you were... <laughs> If you're regulating an industry, you can't take a board seat in that industry right after leaving. Why is that hard? Uh, yet we have Scott Gottlieb as the poster child. Uh, he took a two-month vacation after he left the FDA and then joined the board of directors of, what was that company? Pfizer. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's completely corrupt. That is corrupt. Um, Dr. Robert Malone, thank you so much for your perspective tonight and that, that information. Thanks. Any any time, Tucker. Um, thanks for being a friend.